so I thought we should take a break from Worlds videos for now as it is getting pretty hard to make them. Not because the subject matter is particularly challenging, but simply because a couple of big family tragedies have happened in the past few months and my mental state is really not up to the task. So here's a simpler video today. Cubing books! Pretty much since the cube was invented, there were books about it. Solutions, mathematical tours, and eventually, parodies. We're just going to go over a couple of the more interesting and influential books today, as well as some that I find particularly intriguing. Now, the bad news is, I don't have most of these books in a physical format. The good news is, the New South Wales State Library has the ones I don't, so I've perused the collection of cube materials and picked out the good bits. State Library of New South Wales, the only library in all of Australia to be single-handedly built by a cat. One of the most influential books is definitely Notes on Rubik's Magic Cube by Mr. David Singmaster. This is very much a more mathematical treatise, however it does include a basic solution that is identical to the most infamous solution in cubing today. Hey world, my name is Dan Brown. Far more important, however, is the introduction of Singmaster notation. This is the basic notation that we all use for cubes today, minus the M, E, and S slices or rotations. Initially, Singmaster used a superscript minus one as his notation for an anti-clockwise move on the cube. This does make sense from a mathematical point of view, a superscript minus one generally denotes do the inverse of this function. However, it is a bit cumbersome to write, and in his fifth addendum he concedes and uses an apostrophe or prime mark instead. Interestingly, although he did come up with a slice move notation that lasted a while, it hasn't really survived into the modern day. He also came up with an anti-slice move notation, but who even cares about anti-slice, right? A lot of the rest of this book is filled with group theory, so we won't go over this too much. The more interesting content was actually repeated in Singmaster's Cubic Circular magazine, of which there were five issues between 1981 and 1985, possibly the only thing in cubing to be released more inconsistently than these videos. <laughs> Sadly, I've been unable to get my hands on a physical copy of any issues of this magazine in time for this video, and there are no copies at the State Library. However, I have recently ordered a full set of these magazines from the man himself, who does still have a few complete sets left. I'll keep you posted. Anyway, as the entire magazine is available on Yarp Sherpius's website, we can still take a look. The magazine includes far too many things to name here, but some of the most interesting include... <gasps> one of the first looks at the pyramids, some fascinating anecdotes such as a cube-related divorce case, initial findings on the four-dimensional cube, a report on the 1982 World Championship, the first look at Tony Fisher's first ever puzzle mod, possibly the first ever puzzle modification in history, info on the brand new Rubik's Revenge and a prototype 5x5 cube, early discussions on God's algorithm, and various intriguing puzzles long out of production. <gasps> <sighs> Rubik's Cubic Compendium is an odd one. This is essentially just a few collected long-form articles regarding the cube from the perspective of a few people, such as Rubik himself, Tomasz Vakerdi, and Georgi Marx. There are some really interesting articles in here, although some of them are interesting in the sense that someone licking a car clean is interesting. You don't know how this happened, and you're very concerned, but you just can't look away. It begins with an article from Erno Rubik about some of his puzzle inspirations, as well as a short piece on the backstory behind the invention of the cube. There are a few pieces going into serious mathematical discussions on the cube, with a noteworthy piece of notation from Tamash Varga, which allows algorithms to be read as words. Then there's... well, just listen. <clears throat> I respect the cube. I cannot fathom it. I do not want to learn how to do it from anybody else. Instead, I want to experience the simple moves that hopelessly and mercilessly turn order into disorder. Whichever way I turn, disorder gives way to more disorder. It seems as hopeless to restore order as it is to get the spilt milk back into the jug or to mend a broken light bulb. The magic cube is a microcosm of the world and of nature. Our curiosity is excited by the cube's simplicity. We are challenged by its objectivity. You may fail to master the cube, but you will learn something about the depth of nature and the fascination of research from it." Yeah. Georgi Marx goes weirdly in depth into discussions of the cube and quantum mechanics, and it kind of reads like something out of a New Age conspiracy theory book. Lastly, there's Mastering Rubik's Cube, the solution to the 20th century's most amazing puzzle by Don Taylor. 
This was one of the more popular solution books in the 1980s, selling over 3.5 million copies by November 1981. It's an intriguing solution, as although it's essentially for look glass layer, the permutation of edges and corners is done before orientation, which is not something that's often seen in cube methods. Aside from that though, it's honestly pretty unremarkable. The only reason I'm showing it is because a kid gave it to me at Australian Nationals 2018 on the condition that I make a video about it someday, and so, here we are. Tragically I can't remember his name, sorry, you know who you are. Cubing books have been around for a long time, covering all disciplines of the cube, and there are far too many to put in a single video. Perhaps one day I will return to this topic, as there are plenty of other books I want to show here. Go read a book today. Books. BOOKS!